I would love you to come and join us and share your vision about paying dividends to anonymous bearer shares on the blockchain. And uh, please join us on stage, Roger Bell. Hi, everyone. So I've been in this space for a long time, and I've seen lots of exciting things and interesting things. But I honestly think that this is one of the most interesting things in the last couple of years to come in the entire blockchain space. And uh, today is my first day ever to give a presentation on it. So we're going to talk about paying dividends to anonymous bear shares. All right. So that's some uh, a lot of words there. Let's talk about what uh, what's the origin of this? What's the history of this? How did we get to why this is so exciting? What is that old piece of paper? Well, that's an old, old, old bearer share. And long, long ago, starting in the 1600s is when these got started. So that's a long time ago. And in this part of the world, actually, uh, there were such things as bearer shares, where anybody who physically had the piece of paper, that was the owner of the, the share or the certificate or whatever it was. And this sort of thing, this looks kind of strange to us. We don't see these sorts of things too often anymore. But I'm going to show you something that should look very, very familiar to everybody in this room. Oh, that one looks a little bit more familiar. That's another version of a bear share. And here's one that's even more familiar. Right? We all recognize that one. But if you look really closely, it says right here, it's $1 in silver payable to the bearer on demand. The US dollar started out as a bearer bond or a bearer certificate. The pound sterling used to be a bearer certificate. Most monies around the world, when they switched from precious metals to pieces of paper, were bearer certificates. They were anonymous bearer certificates. That's very, very common in just about every part of the world. But now we have those sorts of things. But the original bearer shares, the pieces of paper, they're starting to come to an end. Governments all around the world are saying, no more of that, right? So here's a news article I found Google, and it says, no more bear shares as of uh, from 2020. Well, 2020 is going to be here pretty darn quick. But technology brings new stuff, right? So we have substitute goods theory. Coke and Pepsi. If Coca-Cola disappeared off the face of the earth, lots more people are going to start drinking Pepsi. The same with McDonald's. If McDonald's disappeared tomorrow, lots more people would be eating at Burger King. Well, the old types of bear shares are disappearing. But we, now we have this new thing called SLP tokens. That stands for Simple Ledger Protocol. And it's just fancy tokens on Bitcoin Cash that anybody can use and send them anywhere in the world instantly. So this old style bearer share on the left here, you had to physically hand it to somebody. And they had to be in the same room with you in order to do that. With tokens on the Bitcoin Cash network, you can send them anywhere in the world instantly, basically for free. And so that brings us to this whole fantastic thing called Simple Ledger Protocol. It's tokens on top of Bitcoin Cash. It's so simple. There's no registration required. Anyone, anywhere can use it. And these tokens are getting more and more traction around the world. Here's some stats where you can see very clearly the trend is up. More and more people are using them because it costs about a tenth of a penny to send them. It takes about a second and a half. And you can send them anywhere in the world. But the next step is where it gets really, really interesting, right? Because every one of these tokens just sits at a Bitcoin Cash address. And so here, there's lots of text here, but you can see in the middle, it's just the token ID. And on the left are all the different token names and symbols. And people are making all sorts of goofy tokens out there. In fact, I, I was putting this together at around 4 this morning, because I have jet lag and can get up at 3 in the morning, no problem. Um, but you can see all sorts of people made a Tupac Shakur token, Sugar Point token. Uh, Another one is the non-aggression principle token. I don't know who made it, but it sounds like something I would be a fan of. But anyhow, all of these exist. You can do it right now today. No registration required. You can make your own token in 30 seconds. If, if you know what you're doing, you can probably do it in 10 seconds. But here's where it becomes really, really interesting, because all of these tokens just sit at a Bitcoin cash address. So we've built an SLP dividend calculator that allows you to send dividend payments to SLP token holders. And you can send the dividends in the form of either Bitcoin Cash or other tokens. So that's some really, really, really useful stuff, right? So 
It's so simple, here's a screenshot. All you do is you paste the token ID and the amount of dividends that you want to pay to all the holders of that token. And then you hit the build transaction button and then it shows a QR code and you can pay that QR code with any BIP70 supporting wallet. And if you don't know what BIP70 is, it's something that pretty much every wallet supports, like the Bitcoin.com wallet, the Blockchain.com wallet, the Coinbase wallet, the BitPay wallet, pretty much all the wallets support that. So you can just scan it and then boom, instantly on the blockchain, you've paid dividends to every single person in the world, no matter what country they're in, you've paid the dividends to the, to the holders of whatever token you selected. So let's talk about the applications for that, right? All sorts of really fun applications. We've heard people talking about security token offerings and security tokens this and security tokens that. Well, now we have a way where not only can you have security tokens, but every single one of those token holders can receive dividend payments right there on the blockchain. So the tokens act as the equivalent of an anonymous bear share. And historically, we've had bear shares. That's not new. And historically, we've had dividend payments. But in the entire history of humankind, we've never had anonymous bear shares that are also able to receive dividend payments. And I think that this is going to be incredibly, incredibly popular. Uh, so one example of that of what somebody could do, so take a traditional company on the stock market. So let's take Coca-Cola, for example. They have a market cap of whatever. Pretty much every single human being on the planet is familiar with Coca-Cola. Almost everybody's tried it at some point. But not many human beings around the world are able to own Coca-Cola stock. You have to be living in a first world country and have access to you know, an E-Trade or Ameritrade account or whatever the equivalent is here in, in the UK. And only then can you buy some stock in this company called Coca-Cola that almost everybody in the world knows and many, many people are fans of. And Coca-Cola pays dividends to their shareholders every quarter. The only way you can get some of those dividends is by holding Coca-Cola stock until now. Imagine if a company were to go and buy traditional Coca-Cola shares and then issue tokens representing those Coca-Cola shares on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. And then every quarter when Coca-Cola pays the dividends, they then take that dividend payment from Coca-Cola and just pass the dividends right along to the anonymous bear share versions of Coca-Cola stock. So now you have two versions of Coca-Cola stock out there in the world. You have the regular old Coca-Cola shares, and then you have the anonymous bear shares version of Coca-Cola stock. And you don't know for sure until the market actually prices something, but I think it's pretty likely that the anonymous bear share versions of Coca-Cola stock that's available to every single human being on the planet to be able to purchase will trade at a premium to the normal Coca-Cola shares on the Dow Jones or NASDAQ or whichever exchange it's listed on. And if that's the case, this company can then arbitrage that. They can buy more of the traditional shares and then sell more tokens and then buy more shares and then sell more tokens. And before you know it, a good chunk of the Coca-Cola stock uh, has then been tokenized on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain and then every quarter they just pass the dividends right there along on the chain to every single human being on the planet that wants to buy Coca-Cola shares. So it doesn't matter if, you know, where they are in the world, all they need is a $20 Android smartphone and they can now own the equivalent of Coca-Cola shares and receive their dividends every quarter from Coca-Cola. That wasn't possible before the invention of this sort of thing. So another example of this, stable coins are incredibly popular. Tether is a big one and there's a number of other ones out there. But the way those coins work is whoever issues the stable coin, they have all this fiat in the bank, they just earn all the interest and they keep it themselves. With, well now with this dividend payment tool, imagine a stable coin in which you have the private keys for the stable coin, the stable coin is in your own wallet, but you get paid the interest from the fiat that's being parked in that bank account somewhere. They just pass that right along to the holder. And you can have it in your offline paper wallet, you know, buried under the shed in your backyard. But every week or every quarter or every month or however often they pay out the interest, boom, the interest goes right there to your wallet. And you don't have to give up the custody of your stable coin to somebody else. So right now we're seeing some companies like Coinbase and some others, they'll offer you interest on your stable coin, but only if you deposit it with them and they get to hold on to it. With this system and the, uh, the SLP dividend payment tool, you can now receive interest on your stable coins without having to give up the custody of your stable coin. And so I think that that's a really, really uh, powerful tool as well. So performance, right? Scalability is really, really important. In a single one of these dividend payment transactions, you can pay up to 2,500 different addresses and it costs you uh, less than a penny to do so. And if you have more than 2,500 token holders, you just make multiple transactions. So 2,500 uh, people can be paid per transaction. 
and it's just a fraction of a penny per transaction. And uh, Bitcoin Cash can already process more than 100 transactions per second right now today. Uh, compare that with another popular blockchain called uh, Bitcoin today that can handle about three transactions per second. And uh, Bitcoin Cash has future scalability already there. They've already been testing it more than 10,000 transactions a second on the Bitcoin Cash testnet. Uh, that's in line with Visa and a number of other things. So anyhow, if this sounds exciting to you, anonymous bear shares for the world, Bitcoin Cash tokens on the SLP are for you. And uh, Bitcoin Cash is smart money, and it's opening a whole new wave of non-custodial financial services. This is a really, really big deal. And anyhow, that's the end of my talk, and I, I see people lurking to let me know that it's time. But uh, again, I'm Roger Veer. Go and head on over to Bitcoin.com to learn more about Bitcoin Cash. And Say that because you are allowed to take a couple of questions. Uh, questions about anonymous bear shares receiving dividend payments on the internet. That sounds some stuff that the regulators are going to be extra excited about. <laughs> Actually, can I ask a question? What are they going to be most worried about? So I, I love to poke fun at regulators a little bit here and there, or maybe a lot. But uh, for the most part, I think what they want to do is they want to protect consumers. And they want to make sure that you know, bad things don't happen to people and they don't get ripped off. But the other side of that coin is a lot of times they stifle innovation in an attempt to protect people. They're protecting people from progressing in the world. Uh, so I don't know, what are they going to be most worried about? I think they're going to be most worried about the fact that they're absolutely powerless to stop this because it's just a distributed technology worldwide, works in every country for everyone everywhere. Let me ask you, if, I, if someone was, uh, what is it, uh, running a drug operation, could they, using the SLP tool, create a dividend for the profits of the drug operation? And through the anonymity, nobody know about it. They absolutely could. So if the Mauna Loa cartel is listening and you want to have an IPO and pay dividends to all your customers, the technology exists for you to do it right now, today, and nobody can stop you. Okay, so next question then, Roger, if I may gracefully posit, is that let's say I suspected this, and then I came to you and asked you to hand over the profits, and I wanted to secure them. Could you? Bitcoin.com never touches the money in any way whatsoever with this tool. So. Uh, it's just open source software that other people can use, and uh, we'd never touch the money. So a lot of people, I think, they're familiar with financial services, but every other financial service in history takes custody of the funds, and that's how every financial services business has worked traditionally. But now, thanks to the invention of cryptocurrencies, we have non-custodial financial services in which the company never touches the money, but provides all sorts of financial services. And, and that's this true. Example they're not holding it, but could they ask you to freeze the fungibility of we never touch the money in any way. And no, but could you interfere with the ability? So no more than we could interfere in the, in the blockchain itself. So we, you'd have to have 51% of the mining power or something to that effect. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> Does any of that worry you? It excites me. And I, I see someone with their hand Does up uh, in the back here and there as well. You're allowed to answer my question. I might keep asking it. I'm, I'm not worried. I'm excited by this. This is, this is fantastic. So are you currently working on or thinking about any ways to build these solutions within a regulatory compliant framework in which you do preserve anonymity and give regulators some sense of ease? And if you're not, where would you put that on your priority list or does it even go on your list? That's probably not on my list personally, but this is open source software that anyone, anyone in the world can use for whatever purpose they want to. And so for people that have that on their list of things to do, more power to you. Have at it. Please, please make use of these tools to do exactly that. Any other questions at this stage? Wait, wait, wait. Thank you. Uh, so are the dividends only payable in Bitcoin Cash or also in the tokens that you create on there? Yeah, the dividends can be paid in either Bitcoin Cash or the tokens. So for example, if you had a stable coin, like let's say a Tether, you could pay the interest payments in additional Tether tokens to the people that already have the Tether tokens. So it's uh, super, super useful. Or you could pay the dividends in the stock of the company that you've tokenized. So you could pay the, let's say co you tokenize Coca-Cola, you can pay the, the, uh, the, the, the I'm sorry, the dividends from Coca-Cola, but you could just have it reinvested into more shares of Coca-Cola and just distribute more Coca-Cola share tokens. Did you see any more questions, Roger, from there? More vantage points? It's awfully bright up here, so uh, I don't. So, but thank you all. So, uh, I apologize. This guy really jumped up when I said I don't see anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to call you Mr. Sniper anymore. That was the name of your company. Would you mind saying your name again? Peter Georgeson. I mean, 
Great. I, I salute you for the, the commitment to the, the, the goal, the cause. I mean, but it's incredibly anarchist in, in, in terms of what the government is trying to achieve and what you are proposing here. Because as far as I know, you can't really own Coca-Cola stock without having a name behind that stock. So setting up a system where you can bypass regulation, I mean, in your line of questioning, you said it's nobody can do anything. They could take your passport. They could do a lot of things. Question. The question is, again, back to the regulation. You know, you're bold, so unbelievably bold. How and why, when there's a whole different atmosphere in the financial regul regulatory landscape and community? Incredibly bold. Are you worried for Roger? Not necessarily for Roger, because <laughs> Roger's his own guy. He's worried about himself or not. Sure. Am I worried for anything whatsoever? No, but it's just the, the landscape that we're in today. So you're at a war with what it is. And, and why? How? I don't think I heard a question there, but I heard a lot of excitement, and I'm excited because the world is changing. This is something new that's never existed before, and uh, I think that's a good thing, right? That's how the world moves forward. So the specific question, then, is it's going to be a war against regulators. How are you going to get around the fact that the, the cartel can do an IPO, profits can be distributed for illegal activities? You know, how are you... How are you going yeah, to get around that? That's a question by itself. Yeah. Same one I asked, but go for it. Yeah, I, I think people should be allowed to do anything that's peaceful. And if people want to have, sell shares in a company and other people want to buy it, I think that's between the people that are selling and buying it. And uh, I don't think a third party should violently interject themselves into that transaction. It, it doesn't encourage, but it, it allows access to illegality. So does the internet. So welcome, welcome to the world we live in. OK, okay another question here. Yeah, no, this is the answer to your question. So. Yeah. On your behalf. I mean, uh, the law, there are laws which are legal and illegal laws. Okay? The law comes to protect uh, what belongs to you. That's why we have new products and new laws going to be developed to comply with this. Old laws which are unlawful, we should not take care of them. This book, past uh, the guy who wrote the book. That's why the concern about the law, if, if that's going to be lawful or not, we'll see when this it appear. When we have so many unlawful laws, that's why you can see all of that conference I'm hearing, oh, it's how that regulator is going to do, I have this, I have that. These are new products which are, which are coming to the market and the, the law, we should take care of the law ourselves because when we have so many unlawful laws, that's just compared with living. Thank you. I think the product's awesome, minus the anonymity. The product is awesome, minus so I, actually, I should clarify. So he, for those that couldn't hear, he's saying he thinks the product is op awesome minus the anonymity. Uh, it doesn't have to be anonymous. You can have every single person have KYC everything, and you, you can do it either way. It, it, it's permissionless. So you can have it where everybody's a known actor, a known entity, and it's permissioned. Or you can have a permissionless system where you don't know who the actors are. You can do either one. You'd be best off knowing who all the actors are. The market's big enough. So I, I invite you to set up that and, and do that and make sure you know everybody. And, and I, I will support you in doing so. You know, uh, because you're so reasonable to talk with, you got eight minutes and 31 seconds extra. Um, but I just want to keep arguing with you, and I know that in the end we'll find a way forward. Uh, that said, we do have to make way for uh, uh, our next uh, set of speakers. But please put your hands together and thank Roger. Thank you all so much.